<sighs> After I fixed that rat nest of a backlash, I picked up my bait caster and started blind casting it all up and down that rip rap. And good thing I chose that 30 pound test braid over fluoro because I was dead sticking that wacky worm at two feet and I felt something short strike on the other end. I mean, I waited a second and I felt this lunker. So I set that hook and I mean, I thought it was going to break my line. So I free spooled that swamp donkey and eventually got him to the boat and lip grabbed him. He had to be 20 pounds, but man, I forgot my scale. Hey, do you happen to know what the creel limit is around here? <laughs> Hey, welcome to Wendell Fishing. Darren here, and today I'm going to translate for you some of the common fishing slang so that maybe someday you can come back to this video and understand what I just said. As you can imagine, there is a ton of fishing slang out there, and if you're anything like me, you get done watching a video and then you spend the next five minutes trying to figure out what the professionals just said. So I'm going to quickly work my way down through the A's, B's, and C's of fishing slang. Some of these you might know, some of you may not, so I'm going to move quickly. But hey, this channel is for all things fishing. I love fishing for bass, catfish, crappie, musky, salmon, gar, stripers, you name it. If you love fishing for all fish as well, please hit that subscribe and bell notification. Smash that like button and I will continue to keep valuable content coming your way. All right, let's hop in. First in the A's, we have artificials. This is a general term for man-made lures to catch fish. So anything uh, other than live or once live bait. Next we have angler. Hey, that's you and me. An angler is someone who simply fishes. I put this in here because I've told people that I am an angler before, an avid angler, and they look at me with glossy eyes. So it made the list. Next, we're gonna move on to the bees and talk about the dreaded backlash. I'm not talking about what happens when you talk back to your mama. If you ever owned a paycaster, you know what a backlash is. The backlash happens because your spool is spinning faster than your line is coming off. So when your lure hits the water and stops, your spool actually continues to spin, creating the dreaded backlash, also known as a bird's nest, also known as a rat's nest, also known as hell on earth, also known as you better break out the scissors because there's no way you're getting that out. Next in the bees, we have the bait caster, which is really just the reel. Here's one right here. People like this because you control the speed, have a lot more control over your rod and reel because you control it with your thumb. Next we have the bale. The bale is the metal ring on your spinning rod that collects your line. In order to cast the spinning rod, you need to flip the bale like this. Next we have the barb. The barb is the backwards protruding hook near the point of the hook so whenever you do catch a fish it doesn't get off easily. Sometimes on a bait holder type hook you actually see barbs on the shank of the hook as well to hold whatever bait it is that you're trying to use. I've done some videos on different types of hooks and hook sizes. I'll throw those up in the cards in just a moment. Next we have the boil, not the skin infection. <laughs> Gross. It's actually a topwater disturbance when usually a large fish is chasing a smaller fish. Next, we have the barbless hook. You guessed it, a hook without a... You might be asking yourself the question, why a barbless hook? Well, a lot of fishermen will actually buy these or file them off because they don't want to cause too much harm to the fish. Next, we have the blind cast. And no, it's not when you close your eyes to cast. It is simply casting in all directions, also known as fan casting. Next we have bottom bouncing. So this is essentially when you're trolling very slowly using a sinker and keeping your lure close to the bottom of the water. Next we have braid, not the hairstyle. This is actually a type of fishing line that has very little stretch, excellent sensitivity, and it actually floats, which is important for different applications of fishing. Next we have breaking. This is where there are a ton of fish breaking the surface. A lot of times you'll see birds diving in, Go take your boat over there, throw your line in. There are some big fish trying to eat some little fish. Next, we have a breaking strength. This has to do with your line. And every line will break under different breaking strength. This is measured in pounds. This is why you see the numbers on your fishing line boxes at the store. The larger the target species, the larger breaking strength you will need. Next, we have a bucktail. A bucktail is simply a lure that's been around for a long time. This is what they look like. Next, we have the buzzbait. Buzzbaits have spinners on them that cause a lot of commotion on the top of the water. Bass love to slam these and they're so fun to watch happen. Here's actually a spinnerbait example. And we're finally to the seas, which I'm going to start with centrifugal brakes. Remember that old bait caster and that backlash I was talking about? Well, they actually have built-in braking systems to help prevent the backlash. This is what they look like. 
Most people don't know they have braking systems, so I actually am doing a video right now on how to adjust your braking system. So head over to WendellFishing.com and you will be able to find it here soon. Next we have the chatterbait, is where you talk the fish to death. Uh, no, it's actually... <laughs> This is actually a another type of lure which displaces a lot of water. It's usually a metal head and a jig. And essentially when this displaces it, it vibrates back and forth really fast. Bass love these. I use them often. Next we have chumming. This is where you throw out ground up fish to attract predator fish. Next we have chunking. The same thing but the fish are in you guessed it, chunks. Next we have the circle hook. Anglers love the circle hook because it prevents the dreaded gut hook. Primarily used on live bait uh, or chunk bait and what happens is when the fish swims away you don't actually need to set the hook very hard. Just apply some steady pressure and reel it in. Actually just got been doing a top 10 fishing hook types. I'll throw it in the cards above. Next we have the crankbait. This is simply a lure that whenever you crank it through the water it wobbles. Here is an example. Um, there are so many different variations of the crankbait. Usually they have treble hooks on them. Sometimes they have rattles inside they have different lips some of them are big some of them are small it helps keep the lure in different water tables uh, i usually only use the crankbait when i'm trolling in my fishing kayak all right we got two more left second the last one is the creel limit the creel limit is the maximum number of fish you are allowed to keep by law and the last one is subscribe this is where the best anglers in the world subscribe to this channel and they're also known for catching some of the biggest fish of their life when they hit the bell notification all right i do need your help if i missed any fishing slang that starts with a b or c please let me know in the comments below now stop watching videos and get out there and catch some fish see ya